Who is the best pound for pound fighter in the world? You looking at him. I started boxing when I was seven. I anticipate being the world champion. Who's the best pound for pound fighter in the world today? Terrence Crawford. We fight to get better and better. Push, boom, go. And my dad always told me as a kid, when you get in the ring, don't play with nobody. Being that he got shot and all the stuff that he went through, that's an inspiring story. I'm a good guy. I'm a good guy. Come on, pop. He's the best all-around athlete that I've ever seen. I'm a fighter, I'll fight him. Oh, that's surely it. I don't think anybody has seen Terrence Crawford in his prime. Me becoming undisputed, that was a great moment for me in my career and my legacy. He's getting better and better. Terrence actually gets better as the rounds go on. I think he is the best pound pound fighter in the world. Oh my goodness! Oh, good shot, shot, great shot. One of the best fighters in the world, so we're gonna be prepared for everything that he brings come fight night. I don't gotta say nothing, you know. I, mean, I see him April 20th. Does this start to feel like home now? You've been here so much. Oh, of course, of course. As you know, I bought a house. This is my house uh, last year. So, you know, we've been coming up here since late 2012, I believe. It's more peaceful, you know, uh, less distractions. You got the altitude and everything's convenient. Everything's been great. Everything's according to the plan and we just count down the days. I'm about to take y'all tour through the house and meet everybody in the training camp. This is my strength and condition coach, Jamie Belt. This is one of my co-trainers, Red Spikes. This is the co co-chef, you know, I'm the main chef. Oh my god. But <laughs> this is one of my other coaches, Brian McIntyre. This is my other coach, Isao Diegues. You know, quiet camp, that would be too boring. I need a little excitement, a little fun, you know, the little laugh. Giggles, you know, so it makes for a smooth camp. We were speaking to Amir recently, and Amir's life changed when he won an Olympic medal in 2004. Your life changed in very different circumstances in 2008 after you got shot, is that right? Oh, life changed 360. You know, I was one of those troubled kids, I should say, uh, out in the streets, doing whatever. Even though I had boxing, you know, to, to take up a lot of my time, I still was doing a lot of stuff that I shouldn't have been doing. Well, it just made me uh, move a little different. You know, I take it as a wake-up call, but that's old, that's behind me, you know. Terrence has worked hard and deserved everything that he's receiving right now. Nothing was ever given to him. Nothing was ever given to us. You know, we had to take risk and improve ourselves night in and night out in the boxing world. I mean, it was a couple of incidences that's happened through his life. And I've always been a big brother to him, you know what I mean? And always tried to steer him the right way. But it's just some things is out of your control. But that just shows the growth of, and maturity of him as a man and where he's come from. And that's why he is the demeanor that he has and why he's so tough and so headstrong. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's, it's part of his upbringing. Did you know the boxing was your ticket out? You know, I started boxing when I was seven. I was away from boxing about five years. I came back in 2002. That's when I really got serious with boxing and felt that I can do something real good with it. When I first got in the ring, it was just an all-out brawl. All I just wanted to do was just fight. You know, my dad always tell, told me as a kid, when you get in the ring, don't play with nobody because you can get hurt playing. You can't play boxing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I always ask Midge, I, I want to spar, I want to spar, I want to spar. I go in there and just brawl it out with, with the other kid and make him cry. And then he put me with a little level up and they outboxing me and I'm getting mad and he like, no, you gotta, you gotta use the jab, you gotta use your skills. And I'm like, what's that? 
all I know is fighting. <laughs> so, you know, he started teaching me the, the basics and fundamentals of boxing. Did you anticipate that it could lead you to main event here at Madison Square Garden, to being a pound for pounder? Well, I anticipate being the world champion. You know, that was my ultimate dream and goals, and that's what I was training for, was to be a world champion. Everything else then was second tier goals and things that just happened along the way. hit the accelerator when you started sparring Tim Bradley, am I right? Right. Well, that time, I wasn't getting any fights or getting any calls for anything. So it was kind of like I was on the shelf. And I was kind of frustrated because I would see a lot of people on TV that I felt I was way better than. So I would always ask my manager to step me up. You know, like, let me fight one of those guys. Let me fight. A guy, this, he'd just tell me, be patient. And I would be like, frustrated. So um, it was a call. Tim Bradley needed some sparring partners, but he needed a southpaw. And my coach had called me and asked me if I wanted to go. Um, and I told him, yeah, but he was like, you can't go orthodox. You got to strictly be southpaw. So that came about. And at first, they was like, I'm too little because I was at 135 and he was a big 140. And so we told him like, if I don't hold my own the first day, send me home, you know? And we went down there and the first day, they was like, whoa. It was like, what's your name? I was like, Terrence. And he tried to buy me out my contract. Tim did. Tim tried okay. to buy me out my contract because he was just like, you not a sparring partner. He was like, you're a world champion. He was just like, I don't know what they doing sitting on you, but you need to be out there to the world. He was like, if if they don't want to do nothing with you, I, I'll do something with you. So he called my manager up and asked him how much he want for me. <laughs> and it was just like, nah, we ain't letting him go. In many ways, your breakout win was Bradis Prescott. Would you agree? Well, that was a fight that was televised on HBO. I was a late replacement. Uh, I was the co-main event of uh, Brandon Rios, Mike Alvarado, I believe. That's the fight that uh, a lot of people started taking notice of who I really was. And that's the fight that put me on the, on the mainstream. And I've seen you speak very fondly of your victory over Ricky Burns in Scotland. And for the longest period of time, you said that was the best night of your career. Is that still the case? That's when I fulfilled all my dreams, was becoming the world champion. That night, I don't think nothing can replace that night as of now. And beating Gamboa took you to the next level, didn't it? it? Took you almost into the elite status. Yeah, that's a fight that a lot of people thought that I was gonna lose. You know, some people uh, would say they wish me the best, but they think that I'm over my head at this fight. But, you know, they gave me my props after the fight. Is he the most similar style that you fought to Amir Khan? Not even. I believe they have different styles. They both have fast hands, but one thing about Gamboa, he was short with fast feet as well. Sometimes I misjudge his placement because of his height. So, you know, that was a difference. Are you a role model? not just to your kids, but to young fight fans and so forth, you embrace that responsibility? Well, it was something that <laughs> I really didn't, you know, actually want, but when it came around, you know, it was something that I had to deal with and show the young generation, you know, the right thing to do. So basically, it, that actually helped me in a sense, because when you got younger kids, looking up to you and telling you that they want to be like you when you grow up. You can't give them bad habits. You can't show them negative things. So that helped me in my life too. How much did he need that family, the family that he's got now to help him straighten out? I think we all needed it. You know what I mean? It, it doesn't matter 
it doesn't matter how you've come up. You know what I mean? Everyone needs family structure, you know, someone to give you the right advice in your life. I mean, it's, I could think about back through my life where people have uh, gave me a little advice here or there, and they might not even remember it. Boxing has been a way out for all of us. I mean, I started boxing at 20 years old. I didn't start young. It was just something that, you know, I was just a natural at. And I never, to this day, would ever thought I would be a coach. Never thought I would be a coach of a world champion to be on this level. This, that was never my aspiration. So it's just, it's just great. Do the streets still call you? Nah. Nah, the streets don't call me. Sometimes I might get mad or something at somebody, but that stuff is behind me. So were you a good guy that did bad things or were you a bad guy that's now good? I don't know. I'm a good guy. I'm a good guy. Fast as you can, pull, run with it, run with it. Listen, there's always bumping and bruises along the road. It's like sharpening a pencil. You gotta stay sharp. And there's always room for improvement. There's never been a perfect fighter. I believe Terrence is always gonna continue to learn, not only from boxing, but just in life in general. I don't think anybody has seen Terrence Crawford in his prime. Like, he's the best overall athlete I've ever been around. You know, his business, it's the office. I enjoy it, because this is what I love to do. light explosive day, very quick hand-eye coordination stuff. I call it a light explosive day. What kind of athlete is Terrence? He's the best all-around athlete that I've ever seen. Use your legs. The guy can throw a football 60 yards, the guy can hit a golf ball 300 yards, the guy can hit a baseball on a 90 mile an hour pitching machine. Like he's the best overall athlete I've ever been around. Fast as you can, pull, run with it, run with it. Boom, 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 boom. Come on, touch and go. Pop. Hey, hey, reset. He's just got freaky genetics. So he's got some of the best genetics a human being can have. Drive it, drive it. Narrow your feet together. There you go, bud. Come on, bud. Time. What do you particularly enjoy doing? I don't like doing nothing but fighting. You gotta train to keep your body in shape, stay healthy, stay fit. He is probably one of the most coachable people I've ever had the pleasure of coaching. Push, boom, go. I've been with him for 13, 14 years now, so you know I know how he thinks, he knows how I think, I know what he expects, he knows what I expect. So a lot of the times, like especially in these types of sessions, he sees everything, he sees the stuff that I have set up, he already knows what's happening. Boom. I don't think anybody has seen Terrence Crawford in his prime. I don't think he's in his prime yet. He's really growing into his body as far as maturing physically, building more muscle, um, growing into that 147 pound frame. And that a boy. You're obviously up at 147 now. How hard did it become to make 135 back in the day? Uh, the face tells it all. <laughs> yeah. I would say the Ray Beltran fight, that was the peak of it. When I fought Gamboa and Ricky Burns, I made it fairly easy. You know, um, it's just that transition from fight to fight. And I did everything the same. And when I fought uh, Beltran, it just stuck to me and it was time to move up. What kind of things did you have to do to, to shift the weight? Work out. I was working to lose weight, I should say. You know, I wasn't working to get better. I was working to lose the weight, so it took a lot out of me and put a lot of stress on my body as well. What courses have you done cooking-wise? Oh, man, I'm, I've went to two, two, two different schools. I've spent some time in different parts of the country learning how to cook. Uh, I spent probably seven, eight years in school back, back and forth over the period of time of just cooking, you know? You find this stuff therapeutic, don't you? Yeah. 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 I mean, I can, I can, two, two th places I can go where I can lose time. 
I can go inside the boxing gym, and I can come inside the kitchen. Okay. What's your what, what's the best what's the best cheat meal? Like if you if you were gonna treat yourself, what would you have? Oh, I'd probably have uh, uh, some fish or something. Yeah. yeah, some fish, some shrimp, you know. Uh, All right, scampi, make a scampi or something. It like looked like some shrimp, vegetables, rice. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. It's like kids. What's, what's <laughs> cooking today, you know? Yeah. And then they look all sad when you don't cook. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to find themselves. Yeah. <laughs> when you're here and doing this, and you're playing cards and this stuff, and you've got your downtime, do you, do you think about the fight? Sometimes, but not, not really. You know, uh, I try to, I try not to think about the fight as much, you know, except when I'm training. You know, this is the time to take, take your mind away from certain things. Do you think about doing anything else professionally? Nah. What, so why boxing? Why choose boxing? Because I've been boxing all my life. All my life. The ring always been uh, the easy way out, being that I was always, you know, uh, in a fight. Ah, he won. I needed the three. How much room for improvement has Terrence got as a fighter? Uh, he, he steadily improved every fight. Every fight to get better and better. I believe Terrence is always going to continue to learn, just not only for boxing, but just in life in general when it comes, uh, when it's a, a revolved around boxing. You know, the in, insides and outsides of the ring, the, uh, the business end of it, you know. So it's going to be a while, man, before, you know, people probably see him decline. He still have, has a lot more to accomplish in the game, especially in this weight division, to uh, even think about saying that he already did peak to the top. You have an unusual setup in the sense that you guys have got, there's three of you. Yeah. In a sport where there's a lot of egos floating around, how do you guys all rub along? It's, it's been a family thing. First off, the reason why it's like, publicized that it's three of us is because, you know, our head coach, Brian McIntyre, likes to put the shine on us because we're in the gym working hard too. You know what I mean? Like we, we're like a three-headed monster. So like any time that they're sparring or any kind of things like that, we all have our input and that's how we sort it out. Because there's other camps that actually have more than one trainer, but like you said, ego. People don't want to give other people credit in gyms and things like that. It's like a lot of trainers have more egos than fighters these days. And we have one common goal, and that's to uh, to get Terrence to be the best that he can possibly be and reach his potential. We've been together since day one. So it's like we didn't have to adjust nothing. So we've been together since day one. How much room for improvement do you have? A lot, a lot. Listen, there's always bumping and bruises along the road, you know. Uh, it's like sharpening a pencil. You gotta, you gotta stay sharp. Absolutely. There's always room for improvement. If you're not in the gym to get better, that's when you get knocked off your square, when you're not, when you're complacent and you're reading your own headlines and your clippings and you're listening to what everybody else is saying. There's always room for improvement. There's never been a perfect fighter, you know what I mean? It's a saying that we say you have to be comfortable with being uncomfortable which means that you have to work on the things that you're not as strong, you work on your weaknesses, and that's uncomfortable for a lot of people to try to change and do things a different way. So that's what we try to do. We go to the gym, we study, his, his, we study Terrence's fights, we, you know, we constantly watch him, and that's the advantage of having three coaches. You know, we can all look at different things, we all have a different perspective, so we can, uh, you know, things we can work on. Do the three of you get together and look at that together, or do you do it all separately? We, we and do then it input? separately and together. It just depends. You know what I mean? Like, we all stand in the same house, so it's not like we got to track each other down for information or nothing like that. But, you know what I mean? We'll, we'll share with each other. We're constantly talking all day, every day, so it's not like it's a specific, we need to sit down and talk about this. It, it could be a dry to Walmart, and I'm like, Bo, you know, he not moving his head, or he not doing this or that. Just for example, 
And boy will be like, I seen that too, so we need to work on that. So when we do pad work and we do, you know, we do multiple things. Like I work the pads, I work the flat ball. Bo works the pads and he works the big medicine ball and the vest. We all do multiple things. So, you know, that is certain areas in the gym that we like specifically work on certain things. So, you know, it's, it's and we've been doing it for a long time, so it's not too many hiccups that we have. You've known him a long time, but do you, do you have like a paternal influence on him? Or are you more friends? Every part of our relationship is friendship, father, son, uncle, nephew, business partners, manager, fighter, boxer, trainer, chef, client. So it all, it all. So sometimes you have to put him in his place. Sometimes. Yeah, you, you, you got to, you got to. It's not necessary putting him in his place. It's just open his eyes up to some things. Yeah, we have some rocky roads and things that we've done in our, our past and that you know neither one of us is proud of. You know, violence in the streets, uh, just things that you know making the making bad choices. You know, when it comes to different aspects of your life. It could be your education, it could be, you know, outside of the gym, inside of the gym. It's a, it's, it varies. Man, it, it was tough because, you know, coming out of Nebraska is not really a hotbed of boxing in, in the United States. So, you know, it's, it was a lot of politics in the amateurs. It was it was politics in the pros. It, it was a very long road, very long and hard fought road. We're not taking nothing for granted. We're not looking past Amir Khan to Errol Spence or anyone else. Our complete focus is April 20th. And thinking about where we've came from, you don't want to go back. You know what I mean? So that's more motivation to work and train hard. Today we got uh, different uh, training, it's, so we do it the way we don't do like the same thing every day. So we're gonna do a series we call it Xbox. We're going 30 minutes, 32 minutes straight, with no break. Like you're switching uh, stations. Is this business? Is this the office? Or would you enjoy it? It's, it's both. You know, it's business, it's the office. I enjoy it because this is what I love to do. You know, I've been boxing since I was seven, which is pretty much all I know. He's getting better and better. These last three fights and these three camps we've done out here, there's been significant changes, you know, in the training part of it and in his body, his strength, his stamina, um, his quickness. You know, he just keeps getting better and better and better. It don't matter what your internet is if your modem can't do it. I, I can't get my three hundred dollars. He don't understand the how it works. I can't get my Miguel know how it works. Miguel, I can't get my three hundred dollars. Damn. He lost the bet. He don't want to pay up. The workout just got pushed back thirty minutes. I'm, I'm getting minutes, ready. Right? I'm getting ready. But you just said some stupid. It ain't never glitch in my house ever. You seen the characters, Trey? What was we doing? Hey, at my house, my guy run like this, all right? Hey, every Over at the camp house, he'd be like, How many times? Do he mad. Hey, can, can you just give my dollar? He over there texting, baby. You got to upgrade, baby. You got to upgrade. Well, I just look at myself as a complete fighter. There's pretty much nothing I can't do in the ring. I can fight going forward. I can fight going backwards. I can fight going side to side. I can box, I can counter punch, uh, I can slug it out, I can switch from orthodox to southpaw effectively, uh, and I can outsmart and beat my opponent in the ring. When I visualize me around in the ring, I visualize everything because anything can happen. You know, what would I do if I get hurt? What would I do if anything bad was to happen? You know, I visualize it all. Oh, told you.
Bud's like my brother. I just, uh, I've been with them for the past probably seven camps. He's been taking zero shortcuts. He's disciplined, you know. He's always 100% to himself. He never cheats himself, so you gotta vote for him, you know. He's just, like, even if he wasn't like my brother right next to me, you know, all the time, I, you would, you know, you gotta like him. He's definitely tougher in a way of, uh, he can just hold out, you know. He, he's so disciplined, it's, it's amazing. He's taking zero shortcuts. He's always 100% to himself. He never cheats himself. Hey, look, just, just know, 300 is the highest they can go. He don't even have 300, probably. Red, what is mine? <laughs> Thank you. Oh, <laughs> hell no. Now, now I'm <laughs> up Chucky more for that. Because I can't hear him, look. Because I can't hear him, because we can't afford him getting hurt. So now Jay. now you have a weak excuse. Hey, why he look? That's a weak excuse. Look at him, hey. That boy's so Scared What's brought you on the most as a fighter? I feel like I always had a professional style than amateur. And I'm a student to the game. I always studied, I always um, want to learn different styles and watch different styles when I watch boxing, just so if I ever came across a style like that, I'd know what to do. Watch tendencies and you know, just dissect a fighter. When was the last time you lost? 2007. And who was that to? To Miguel Gonzalez in the Olympic trials. How did that feel? I felt I won, but that wasn't my dream. You know, so I just shook it off and was like, okay, it's time to go pro. You know, um, I see y'all in the professional uh, league. And a lot of people that I was fighting with and the amateurs, not even close to where I'm at now. And that just shows, you know, the level that I have grown since then. Do you have a fear of losing? No. You know, I don't really too much try to think about that. You know, um, I know the chances of me losing in a fight is anything can happen. But at the same time, it's boxing. I don't worry about them things. I just focus on what I have to focus on and everything else is gonna play out how it's gonna play out. He's a good fighter. Uh, he's very fast, he moves well. He got a lot of experience in big fights as well. He boxed real good. I don't think he's gonna go uh, 12. We're at 147 pounds to be the best. We wanna fight the best. I was a lineal champion at 35. I was a lineal champion at 140. Now I'm looking to do the same thing that 147. I want to become undisputed. There you go. That's my main goal right now. The reigning, defending, undefeated champion of the world, Terrence Bud. What's it like being a famous celebrity? Do you like it? It's normal. You know, uh, this was something that I already knew would come with the territory, with becoming champion and becoming one of the best fighters in the world. So um, I prepared myself for this before this even happened. It's like I'm living it again. It gets frustrating sometimes, but at the same time, those are the people that's paying for your fights. Those are the people that's you know, putting money in your pockets, I should say. Because without the fans, you know, you're nobody. There's a lot of great fighters in the world that don't have a big following, that don't get what they deserve because of the following. Not that they not a great fighter, it's the backing. They don't have the support from the, the general public. You're a family man in a dangerous sport. Do you give that a lot of thought? I talk to my kids about it all the time. You know, now that they getting up in age where they can start to understand certain things. Uh, me and my son, we, we have talks about it all the time because I tell him I don't want him to box and he want to box. You know, he's why and I have to break it down to him and tell him why and why I'm doing this for them and he can do something better 
because he got a better uh, start and uh, more opportunities than I had when I was his age. Do you have an end game in mind of how, of how long you want to be fighting for? Uh, a few more years, a few more years, but right now I'm not even close to thinking about that because I'm so focused on the task at hand. That's retirement, it's not even in my mind right now. The task at hand is Amir Khan. What do you make of him as a fighter? He's a good fighter. Uh, he's very fast, he's, he moves well. He got a lot of experience in, in big fights as well. Uh, he boxed real good. Crawford is a tough fighter. I mean, he's a good boxer, he's a good fighter. He's very durable. He's dangerous. A lot of people don't want to fight him. And when the phone call came to me, I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll fight him. You know, um, it's, it is a big fight, and I want to be in the big fights. Oh, oh, huge right hand, and Khan down. And is he going to get up? It doesn't look like it. I think it's all over right here. And Khan just about knocked cold. People talk about his punch resistance, although he's obviously beaten people like Maidana on points, and he has withstood some punishment from some good fighters. What do you make of it? Um, them was good fights, you know, but me personally, when I look at fighters like Madonna and the other fighters that he beat, no disrespect to those fighters, they good fighters, but Madonna was just a straight come for a fighter that only, his only big win was Broner, you know, but a lot of people rate Madonna at a high status but to me, I can't rate him at a high status because he haven't really beaten nobody. Every time he stepped up, he lost. It was because he pushed Mayweather, probably, yeah. But he lost. Yeah. We, we, don't, we don't give credit to doing good in fights. You know, if that's the case, then everybody good fighters. What happens in the fight between Amir and Terence Crawford? How do you see it going down in terms of styles and the fight itself? I think each one brings their set of troubles to the table that the other one will have to figure out. Amir is going to have to be on point every second of every round. Can't afford to lose focus and concentration and take it one round at a time. What kind of threat does Khan pose? Well, I mean, his speed, his experience, you know, he, he had a, he's a, what was he, Olympic silver medalist. He's a couple time world champion. And also, you know, he's working with a great coach, uh, Virgil Hunter. What do you think he's got that might trouble Terrence Crawford? Well, the first thing that comes to mind is always his hand speed. Uh, try to bring his IQ up with his hand speed. He's, he's a thinking coach. He's a, he's an IQ, X's and O's type of coach. So. You know, if you go review Amir Khan's tapes, you kind of want to go look at when he was doing very good, when he was being himself. I always said he could have been a better student of the game, but at the same time, you have to let his instincts take focus and uh, his reactions take focus. And uh, if he's in tune every second, every round, he should do well. You don't really want to focus on too much of his bad performances. You want to more focus on what he's been doing good because a coach like him is going to add that back to his game if he's gotten away from doing different things. You know, we, we got to make sure that we are uh, doing our homework, we dotting our I's and crossing our T's and make sure we come home victorious. Do you have any concerns about his speed? No. Crawford. He does a lot of everything well. He assesses the situation well. He has outstanding IQ, along with the physical attributes to, to complement that IQ and understanding of the sport. And uh, he's a proven winner. In my book, probably right there, top pound for pound. Very good, a huge uh, obstacle, a huge puzzle to overcome. Who's the best pound for pound fighter in the world today? Terrence Crawford. I think he is the best pound for pound fighter in the world. Knows he's the best pound for pound fighter. From the group of people who are the two world champions in my division, I'll probably beat the hardest one. Who is the best pound for pound fighter in the world? You looking at? Him.
Terrence provides a lot of problems for people that they've never seen. It's not every day you have a fighter that can fight both ways and with his speed, power, defense, he does everything very well. Who's the second best pound for pound fighter in the world? That ain't my position to rate. People are talking about, in terms of the top five, people talk about Canelo, they talk about Errol Spence, they talk about Lomachenko and Usyk. Would you put those guys all, all near the top end with you? Canelo and Usyk, yes. Errol, he's a great fighter. Uh, I take no credit away from him, but I, I can't put him in the top five uh, beating Mikey Garcia. Just like I can not give Lomachenko credit for beating Regan down. When I fight guys my weight or a little bit shorter, they, they don't give me credit because they say I'm the bigger man and they can't give me credit. So I can't give somebody credit for fighting somebody that haven't never fought in a weight class before credit. Does Spence have a particular X on his back because people regard him as your, as your natural rival? People are saying that's the best fight that can be made in boxing. That is the best fight, you know, on paper, but we don't know because we never fought the fight. You know, he's uh, gifted in a lot of ways and I'm gifted in a lot of ways and a lot of people just view me and him as the two top fighters at the welterweight division. We just gotta fight the fight to see who's number one. I learned a lot from Terrence Crawford and we were very close. Where he come from and his situation, being that he got shot before and all the stuff that he went through to get to where he at today, that's an inspired story and I learned a lot from him in the boxing ring and outside the boxing ring. Crawford's a guy who's coming up from light welterweight to welterweight. I don't think he's ever fought anyone like me or as, as skillful as me. I don't expect the American to do too bad, but I know that his chin ain't, ain't all the way there, so I don't, I don't think it's gonna go uh, 12. So I just feel that it's, it's not an easy task, it's an easier task than the Canelo fight. Look at my resume, look who he's fought, look, look the guys he's fought, apart from one name, Prescott, who beat me he, and he beat Prescott, but anyone else, I probably beat as myself as well. First few rounds gonna be a chess match, two boxers that um, think a lot. But once Terrence figure out the distance and the range, I feel like he gonna knock American out. When we spoke in the UK earlier in the year, there was like a logjam of all the welterweights also having upcoming fights, and Khan was the guy that you pulled out the hat. He wasn't he wasn't the top of your list, though, was he? No. And it was just because the other guys were busy. Correct. So who is at the top of the list? The title holders. Amir seems to think he's the best guy that Terence has faced. Do you agree? And I wouldn't agree because on paper it don't don't look like it. But to like the eye test, some people might say he's the best because of what he's accomplished in, in the, the weight division. But there's been some other guys out there, out there that Terence has beat, some undefeated champions, some Olympians. So. We just got to see. Do you think it's Khan's hand speed that sets him apart from other contenders right now? I don't think so because uh, Gamboa was pretty fast. A couple other fighters, Ter Terrence, was, Terrence fought was pretty fast. So, you know, but whatever type of speed you bring to the table, Terrence is going to be ready for it. As a fighter, he's a good fighter. He's a good fighter, undefeated 147. He got good wins with uh, another fighters. A couple of lo losses, but he's a good fighter. When you're an underdog, um, everyone's probably expecting you to go in there and lose. Um, but I don't, I mean, I really feel that I've got the skill, I've got the speed, I've got the power, and I've got the size in this fight. We have to be in shape, prepare for 12 rounds, prepare for the fight. If the knockout doesn't come, so we got to be ready. Just keep him sharp and ready for the 12 rounds. There you go, bud. Come on, bud. I'm unbeaten in the welterweight division. Um, it's a comfortable division for me where I feel really stronger and I feel quicker. You know, we have plan A through Z. So is there certain things you just got to take into consideration? Like, we don't go into fights looking for knockouts. We're not concerned about what anybody said about his chin or, 
or things like that. You know, that's 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 when you start reading the headlines and looking at news clippings because it's it's Terrence versus Amir in there. It's not what any critics are. The critics can't fight for him. This coach can't fight for him. And that goes both ways. Well, it is going to be a good game of chess. But we're going to be ready. If he wants to fight coming forward, we'll be ready. If he wants to fight going backwards, we'll be ready. So whatever he brings to the table, uh, I'll be more than ready for. He's going to be prepared. We're going to be prepared. It's going to be a game of adjustments, and that's what Terrence does well. He adjusts his IQ, us as a team. You know, we're, we're constantly, you know, uh, watching and picking apart. I mean, I'm doing everything I need to do to win this fight, so I'm not leaving anything uh, behind. So I'll be ready, and come April 20th, I will win this fight. You know, there's a lot of things that he can come in the ring and do uh, that we're going to be prepared for. He can move. He can come forward. He can uh, try to trade with me. Uh, he can try to hit and hold. There's a number of things that he can do to try to uh, frustrate me. But like I said, we're going to be prepared for everything that he brings come fight night. It's going to be a dominant performance. It's going to be a breakout performance. I think that uh, it's going to it's going to open some eyes in the boxing world, especially at 147, because it's a lot of doubters. Oh, he's a small welterweight. Oh, he doesn't carry as much power. You know what I mean? Like, he might not be as physically strong. This is what the critics are saying, so maybe they'll answer some questions for him. I, I think we'll answer a lot of questions on April 20th. Terrence Crawford. Do you love the game? Of course. I've been in it since I was seven. I've given so much of my life to boxing, and I'm not done yet. We're at 147 pounds to be the best. You can put five or six different fighters inside of one of Terrence Crawford. We want to fight the best. Terrence actually gets better and better as the rounds go on. We want to create a legacy. I want to become undisputed. That's my main goal right now. I was a lineal champion at 35. I was a lineal champion at 140. Now I'm looking to do the same thing at 147. I'll tell you one thing, we're not ducking or dodging anybody. We'll take anybody. How would you want to be remembered by Five Fives? One of the best fighters that ever lace up the gloves. <laughs>